tell by looking at me now, but I used to be a runner. I used to run a lot. I loved everything about it. It just brought me so much joy and it seemed to come so easy to me. When I decided that I wanted to start running, I just started doing it and it was a lot of work and it did take time to build up that stamina to where I could run a marathon, but the process of learning how to run came really, really easy to me. And when I look at the difference between my life a decade ago and my life now, what the big difference is, is the flexibility in my schedule. So my kids were little. They did not have these crazy schedules that they have now of needing to be driven here, there, and everywhere. I sold 31, but beyond that, I was a stay-at-home mom. So my schedule was super, super flexible. The hardest part about my actual day was trying to get enough sleep at night because I had two kids under two and they weren't sleeping through the night yet. Now my schedule looks very different. I work two night shift jobs. One is full-time, one is PRN. I homeschool two of my kids. That doesn't seem like a whole lot, but whenever you're trying to weave in sleeping during the day, driving kids to school, picking kids up from school, volunteering at the church, trying to have some semblance of a social life and continuing to have a relationship with your husband, it all adds up and it becomes a lot. And before you know it, my calendar is full, but I'm not special. I am not the only one that has a schedule that is cram packed full and I can't find time for myself. Everyone is busy. Every time I talk to my mom friends, they're busy. They have lives and they have craziness going on. And whether they have one kid or whether they have five kids, it's all the same. Everybody's schedule is cram packed full. So if you're a busy mom and you are so focused on everyone else and worrying about their schedules and getting everyone where they're supposed to be and making sure they have what they need and you put yourself on the back burner and you come last and there's no room for you in the schedule i'm glad you're here i really am glad you're here because you're in good company because the truth is it doesn't matter if you work inside the home if you work outside the home if you're a stay-at-home mom if you work five jobs it doesn't matter if you have one kid or if you have a hundred kids all of our schedules are busy and as moms, it is ingrained in us to put everyone first and to make sure that they have what they need before we take care of ourselves. And a lot of times we get put on the back burner. And then you wind up like me, where over the course of a decade, you gain 130 pounds, you have a stroke, you end up having a cardiologist, and you look around and you wonder what on earth happened for you to get where you are. I think the big question is how do you gain 130 pounds? The answer to that is that it took me a decade to do it. So it wasn't like one big choice. It wasn't one day or one week or one year. It was a bunch of little choices that I made over the course of a decade that has resulted in this. So some of these choices I feel were sad times and some of them were happy times. So I actually sprained my knee running in a marathon. And so that put me out for a little while. In the process of healing from that, I separated from my ex-husband and we started the divorce process. And then I went back to school I started working full time, then a pandemic hit. And so all of those things happened and they are little bits of life along the way that I just kept putting myself on the back burner and putting myself on the back burner. And suddenly I look up and a whole decade has passed. But also in that time, I started dating my current husband. So the happy weight comes on and all the celebration and loving life. And so it's not all bad things that happen. You know, I get together with friends and I hang out with my parents that I absolutely love. And if you're from the South, 
everything revolves around food. So no matter what you do, there's food there. And so whether it's a sad moment or whether it's a happy moment, I'm eating. So I would say that is the quickest way to gain 130 pounds is day by day making irresponsible decisions about your health and not paying attention to what's best for you. So the result of gaining 130 pounds didn't just make bad decisions and then I gained the weight and I'm just heavier than I used to be. Ultimately what happened was I had a stroke and thankfully there is no permanent damage to my brain. So when we did all the MRIs and stuff, there's no permanent damage that has been done to my brain. However, I do have damage that has been done to my eyes and I have excessive blood pooling that is not reabsorbing the way that they think that it should. And that may in fact result in a procedure to remove the extra blood pooling. But it could be much worse. And I am so very thankful that that is the worst thing that happened during the stroke. I also am seeing a cardiologist because I have uncontrolled hypertension. I've been on medication, we've tried different things, and nothing is working for that. So I am having to see a heart specialist and I am now on three different blood pressure medications. So this could also be worse because when we did the ultrasound of my heart, my heart still looks young and all the muscles look great. There's no enlargement. All the valves are working great. So all of this is reversible. And not to mention the fact that I just feel crappy in my own skin. Like my clothes don't fit right. I don't feel like I can move the way that I used to be able to move, walking, talking, you know, things like that, that, that are everyday things. I get winded doing it. And so praise God that every last one of these things that has happened to me is reversible. And I have a team of people working with me to get me headed in the right direction, but it is absolutely a shame that it took a stroke to wake me up to see exactly how out of shape and how unhealthy I am. But just because everything with my health is reversible, it doesn't change the fact that my schedule is still packed. It doesn't change the fact that I still work two night shift, shift jobs. It doesn't change the fact that I homeschool my kids or that I am a chauffeur or that I'm trying to have a social life. And none of that stuff changes. What does change is that I am now given the opportunity to be intentional about my health and how important that is and make those changes. So I have a big decision to make. Do I wanna make the changes? Or do I not want to make the changes? There's really no right or wrong answer. It just depends on how I want to live out the rest of my life. And if I'm being completely honest with you, I am ready to make the changes because I cannot continue living this way. So 1 Corinthians 6.20 says, You were bought with a price, so glorify God in your body. I mean, that's pretty cut and dry bought with a price. Jesus died for my sins, so I should treat this body with respect. I saw a quote one time that said, God made it, Jesus died for it, and the Holy Spirit lives in it, so you should treat your body with some respect. That is 100% true. If my self-esteem issues and my health issues do not get my attention, the fact that I have been mistreating the body that God gave me, I have not been a good steward of this body, should get my attention. My goal should be to please the Lord and to live a Christ-like life, and that is what I strive for. That includes not eating too much and treating my body with respect. So I'm gonna go over five things that I can do to help me lose the 130 pounds that I gained and get my health back on track. And I'm sharing these with you because it doesn't matter if you were just a little bit out of shape or if you were vastly out of shape like I am, all of these things can help you get back on track so that you can be living a life that glorifies God. So the first thing I can do to get my health back on track 
is to do exactly what my doctor tells me to do. I know, seems like a no brainer, right? However, I'm really bad about taking medication that I'm supposed to take. I'm really bad about if I miss an appointment to follow up and get it rescheduled. So my focus is to do exactly what the doctor has told me to do. I need to take my blood pressure medication like I'm supposed to, cut back on salt. She has ordered me to walk at least 15 minutes a day and build up the cardio to even more than that, but to start with 15 minutes a day. And I have other referrals of other tests that need to be done, like a sleep study. So the first thing I can do is exactly what she says, and that's not that much to ask. The second thing I can do is be intentional about my time. Time is the one resource that we can never get back. It is a non-renewable resource. Once you waste it, it is gone. You never, ever, ever get it back. I have the worst habit of losing time in my day from scrolling on Instagram, scrolling Facebook, looking at YouTube too long. I get lost in the scroll. I also like to hit the snooze button one too many times. And if I'm not careful, I find myself sleeping in an extra hour. And that extra hour can make such a huge difference in the things that I am able to do in my day. I just did a video last week about waking up early and creating space for slow mornings so that you can get things done and reach your goals. 15 minutes of walking is not that much time. I can do that in the middle of the day. I can do it in between teaching the kids. I can do it as soon as I get up from my nap before I get ready for work. It's not that much time in the day. So while I don't have any extra time, my schedule hasn't changed, I also need to make sure that my priorities are straight and that I am making the best use and being a good steward of my time. The third thing I can do to get my health back on track is stop eating out. Oh boy, I hate cooking. I hate it. And eating out is so easy. My husband is the one that cooks in our house. And if you ask any of my kids, they think if anything happens to him, they will never have a home cooked meal again. And while I can cook, I don't enjoy it. And with our busy schedule, sometimes eating out is just the easiest thing to do. However, there, there are a few things that you can do to make cooking at home a little bit easier. One, shop your pantry. Take a list of everything that you have in your pantry and then plan your meals around that. When you go to buy your groceries, instead of going into the store, shop online. That way you can either pick them up or have them delivered to your house. And then third, meal prep. Go ahead and get everything ready so that it is good to go when you start cooking. And if at all possible, just do crock pot meals. So that way you just throw everything in the crock pot. You don't have to worry about it and it's ready to go when you are ready to eat. The fourth thing I can do to help with my health is to drink more water. This one seems like a no brainer as well. However, I am not a fan of water. I don't like plain water. And if I'm being completely honest, I am obsessed with coffee. So in order to do this, I am going to find my favorite cup. I'm gonna have to get me some flavors so that I can rotate out flavored waters with regular waters. But this is something that whether I like it or not, it is good for my health and I just need to suck it up and be the 40 year old woman that I am and drink my water. And the fifth thing that I can do to focus on my health and get me back on track is finding accountability partners. Finding those people that I can trust that will lovingly put me in my place. So thankfully, my husband is the type of man that will help me be accountable without making me feel judged. And that is so huge because there is a fine line of feeling like you're being fussed at and feeling like you are loved. And I am so thankful that I have him. I'm also surrounded by some wonderful, wonderful women that I have met through my church, through life groups, through the youth that my kids go to. I have an upcoming D group that I'm about to be a part of. And all of these women 
are just there to love, support, pray for you, and to hold you accountable for the things that you should be doing when you ask them to do that and to do it in a loving way. So I would encourage you to look at the people in your life, reach out to someone that you can trust and someone that loves you and someone that's going to build you up while holding you accountable instead of tearing you down in the process. So I hope these tips helped you. I cannot wait to share my progress with you each month. If you found something that was helpful for you, comment below and let me know which one you think is going to help you the most. Don't forget to click subscribe and the little bell notification so that you don't miss any new videos and be sure to check me out on TikTok and Instagram.